are the relevant standards. On the previous two webinars, we spent quite a lot of time talking about the standards that dealt with presentation, recognition, and measurement, IAS 32 and IAS 39. These used to contain disclosure requirements, but IFRS 7 has taken over from them. IFRS 7 is gradually changing at the moment, and now there has been a small change from 1st of January 2013, but that's only in respect of the set-off between assets and liabilities. So generally not a lot of change for a couple of years, but we will expect another change in terms of all of these standards for periods commencing 1st of January 2015 onwards when we get the new standard on financial instruments, IFRS 9. Now, if you want more detail on the disclosures that are in the slides here today, I'd recommend that you go off and have a look at the standard. Have a look at IFRS 7. Additionally, when you're preparing a set of accounts, I imagine you'll be using some sort of IFRS disclosure checklist. So I'm not looking to go into masses and masses of detail, but I'm looking to give you an overview here on the disclosure requirements, the major categories of disclosure, a few ideas on how it might look by looking at examples, because most of the time we should be using disclosure checklists to make sure we don't miss anything on the way through. But in keeping with my theme of giving you an idea of the overview of the disclosures that are needed, let's start here. In terms of disclosures on financial instruments, in IFRS 7 there are broadly two categories. So on the right side of this circle you've got details of the financial instruments themselves, some sort of tabular approach to disclosing different categories of financial instruments, how they work, you know, where sometimes detailed disclosures about the nature of those instruments. Then you've got the risks and uncertainties. So the user can understand how the risks and uncertainties with those financial instruments could affect the future or could affect the financial statements. Then you've got fair value disclosures into the different hierarchy of fair values when financial instruments are fair value, level one, level two, level three disclosures. If any of that is alien to you, don't worry, we'll be looking at some examples of that later. And finally, accounting policy disclosure. Uh, this could take pages in some sense of account for different sorts of financial instruments, the derivatives, the liabilities, for liabilities at fair value, for liabilities at amortized cost, the assets at fair value through P&L for uh, assets at, uh, uh, at uh, amortized cost. So we'll look at examples of all of these as we go through. So by the time we've finished, we will cover each of these four segments. Well, let's start off with IFRS 7. IFRS 7 deals with the areas here, information about the significance of financial instruments and information about the nature and extent of the risks 